So I made my term project in Unity, a program that runs C Sharp rather than Python, but it lets you make these 3D simulators and games uh, very well. The most important thing of a flight simulator, obviously, is the maneuverability of the plane. So you can do a combination of things. You can yaw, the simple turn that just moves the plane side to side, which is kind of slow. You can bank for a much sharper turn, but um, harder, a little bit to control. And then you can pitch going up and down like this. You can also use the throttle to go faster or brakes to go slower, which is seen in the top right in the speedometer. And finally, you can shoot the gun, which will fire projectiles that interact with the terrain and with targets. So the targets of this military camp here. The models of the camp and the plane I found online, although I colored each of the parts individually. There were about, uh, if I remember correctly, 203 parts of the plane and um, 40-ish across all of the targets that needed to be custom colored. And the object obviously are interactable with the gun. The terrain is also interactable with the plane itself, so you can run into it. That's not advisable, however, because that's how you lose. The way to win, if you uh, are with me, is to destroy all of these targets. So the score in the top left shows you how close you are to completing the game. And you'll notice that it's a little bit dim uh, after I restarted it. There's a bug in Unity that the lighting resets every time you reset the program, which removes all but that one big directional light that you see casting these huge shadows. It's not a ton I can do about that. It's just a, a bug in Unity, not uh, my program individually. And the, the windscreen will show the time it took you to finish the mission, right here. It also lets you restart the game, and you can do that to play again, again with this little bit of a dim lighting bug, or you can deselect the play button and just go back to the scene view where the game is built. So in the scene view, you'll see half the code in this hierarchy over here. All of the objects in the game are represented somewhere in this large hierarchy. And they have a various pieces of data in them, from color to position to the mesh that actually makes them visible in the game. And finally, the scripts, which are the other half of the code. This will control any action or interaction between the objects of the game. You'll see that right here. This is, again, C-sharp code. And I'll just briefly go over what the code does on a higher level. You have your variable declarations. You have the start function, which will obviously start the program. When you hit play, all of these variables are um, instantiated, and the game begins, which will then cause the update function to run every frame. This will check for keyboard inputs and run the physics engine. So you'll see the gravity. You'll see all of these keyboard inputs affecting your speed, affecting your pitch, yaw, bank, etc. And the projectiles. So the last bit of physics is the collider. When you collide with the ground, you trigger the game over effect and have this uh, piece of code keeping you from going through. So rather than passing, it'll end the game and say you lost, you ran into the ground. And then finally, you have your win condition, which when you hit a score of 27, when you hit all of the targets, you'll actually win the game. And this game over text will display the game over screen, the text objects you kind of see here and here. All right, that's it. Thank you.